20 degrees, that's got to be sp2 hybridized, not sp3 hybridized. So if nitrogen were sp2 hybridized, um, this is what it would look like, sp2. And so sp2 hybridizes nitrogen. Um, look like this. So let's put this to the bond of the carbon here, and then we'll put a hydrogen here, another hydrogen here. And so when I look at the C and the H angles, 119, the H and H angle is 119, and the H and C angle is 119. This looks like it here. And so that means the lone pair is going to be where? It means the lone pair has got to be in the P orbital. <coughs> We'll put the lone pair in the P orbital. The sp2s are good because the sp2s are far apart, but when you look at the P, the P to sp2 angle is 90 degrees. And so we got 90 degree repulsions here. Is that good? Well, it's much better to have 109 degree repulsions, right? And so the reason we hybridize is, what, what are the reasons we hybridize? We hybridize to? Minimize repulsion. Yeah, minimize repulsions. And clearly, we're not minimizing repulsions here. You know, if we were to minimize repulsions, we want to go sp3, not sp2, for the hybridization on this nitrogen. Or or maximize the bonding. <coughs> and so the reason this becomes sp2 and not sp3 is to maximize the bonding. But how are we going to maximize the bonding in something like this? Well, we can see how the bonding is going to be maximized. Well, I'm going to just draw this top view here. So we got the oxygen here. Now, if the nitrogen is sp2 hybridized, that means the hydrogens are going to be in a trigonal planar arrangement with the carbon. So all this is trigonal planar. And so take a look. This molecule is going to be totally flat. Pancake. It's totally flat, um, meaning where are the p orbitals? This is the top view. So the p orbitals are, are now. Well, here I have this. Here's my double bond. It's a PP pi bond, right? But now if the nitrogen is sp2, then I have this lone pair here. And then take a look at the orientation of those p orbitals. When you look at the orientation of the p orbitals, we can have delocalization occur. Do you see that? In which we can spread out the pi and the lone pair over the entire molecule. I shouldn't bond it here, but we're going to have this um, delocalization occur like this. Delocalization. Uh, we can actually see this uh, if we do. There are actually two resonance forms that we can draw for this particular molecule. One resonance form looks like this. Just what we have over there. I'm going to draw it a little differently. I'm going to draw it without any kind of structural. Like, what's the H and H bond angle here? Is it 90 degrees? You know, on, on tests, I do this sometimes. On tests, I'll draw this. I'll ask, what is the HOC bond angle? <laughs> lots of people will say 90 degrees. Not lots, but it's uh, more than you think. And then I draw it like this. What's the bond angle? A lot of people will say 180 degrees. So that looks like 180 degrees to me, doesn't it? 180 degrees. This looks like 90 degrees. But loose structures, you don't have to draw accurately. Loose structures, you can draw any way you want. And so neither of these, 
the actual bond angle is like 105 <coughs> degrees. Yeah. It's like water. And so I'm not going to pay attention to the bond angles here. The resonance form is this. If I drop this lone pair into the bond here, I'm going to kick this lone pair out. And so, um, <coughs> not lone pair, kick this bonding pair out and make it a lone pair. And so it's going to look like this. And so um, I, I take a look at that here, and I go, are these two equivalent resonance forms in energy? No, not at all. In fact, this one looks pretty bad, because this one has a negative charge here and a positive charge here. And this one has all zero formal charges, so normally I wouldn't even consider this one. Is I'd say, ah, you only have one, this one. But because of the um, delocalization, because of the delocalization, this one becomes more significant. Hey, the charges are spread out even more? Uh, because of the um, delocalization of the electrons in the pi, PP network there. However, we do have localization here in the charge. Oh, well, we still have that. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately. And so, um, well, one way we could figure it out is, is this. We could look at the bond length, the carbon-nitrogen bond length. And unfortunately, this is not working, so I'll go to the table and just tell you what it is. If we go back to chapter 10 and look at the bond lengths, Okay, let me just Okay, a carbon nitrogen single bond is 147. So a carbon nitrogen 147, the double bond and the triple bond, what are they? And so a double bond, the average bond length is 128 and 116. All right, we can measure the bond length in this molecule. And so the carbon nitrogen bond length in this molecule is uh, back to the homework. Uh, so th this homework problem is a little deceptive because when you think of the number 57, you think of just a standard problem. This, this is an advanced problem. Not a standard. There's a number 57. The bond length is 138 picometers. At 138 picometers, it tells me it's between a the carbon nitrogen bond is not a single, not a double. It's in between. In between, like a bond order of like say 1.5. So what that means is uh, that means that the actual structure is a hybrid, hybrid. structure of these two. That's what we have. And we have um, so the hybrid structure is going to look like this, where we delocalize the pi bonding. We do that in the hybrid structure. The hybrid structure we see is going to delocalize it uh, when we have resonance. This is called this is why it's called resonance delocalization. When we have resonance, we delocalize. So each bond should be a one and a half bond. <coughs> Then you can also delocalize a charge. You know, the charge is going to be minus one half and plus one half. So that helps lower the charge. You know, because the more the charge is localized, the more reactive it is. So minus one is quite localized. If you drop it down to minus one half by delocalizing over over the structure, then that helps. Okay. Uh, so uh, well. D does that make sense for this particular problem? So uh, sometimes um, what we predict for the hybridization isn't what we observe because there are other factors. And so I would have predicted sp3, but it turned out to be sp2.